In mechanics, a body is any object to which a force may be applied. Examples of bodies include blocks, pendulums, and vehicles. A rigid body is one that is not deformed when a force is applied to it. Its shape is not altered by the force. A particle is a body that has mass, but whose other dimensions are considered to be negligible. The size and shape of a particle are too small to be worth considering. In practice, larger bodies are often treated as particles when they're small relative to their surroundings. A lamina is a flat body which has area but negligible thickness. A hollow body is a shell which has negligible thickness but takes up some volume. A force may be defined as that which causes or tends to cause a change in the state of rest or the uniform motion of a body. If a body is moved from rest, a force must have been applied. If a body moving at constant velocity changes its velocity, then again, a force must have been applied. A change in velocity of a body is an acceleration. Therefore, a force causes an acceleration. A force is characterized by its magnitude, its direction, and its type. Because both the magnitude and direction of a force are significant, forces are vector quantities. Types of force in mechanics include weight, pushes and pulls, friction, normal reaction, tension, and thrust. Force is a vector quantity. The SI unit of force is the Newton. One Newton is the force required to give a mass of one kilogram an acceleration of one meter per second per second. The weight of a body is the force of attraction which the Earth exerts on the body. Weight is sometimes referred to as the force due to gravity. It acts at the center of gravity of the body and is directed vertically downwards. A light body is one which, for calculation purposes, is considered to have no mass and is therefore weightless. An example of a light body is a string with a body attached, where the weight of the string itself is ignored in any calculation. Weight must always be assumed to act on a body unless it is specifically defined as a light body. Pushing and pulling forces are those which act on a body at a point. Again, they are vector quantities and have a specific direction. Friction is a contact force existing between a body and a rough surface. It acts along the common surface and in a direction that opposes any motion of the body. A normal reaction force is one which exists on a body in contact with a surface. It acts at right angles to the direction of the surfaces in contact. Tension is a force which can act in strings, springs or rods. It is a pulling force which is exerted by the string, spring or rod on a body to which it is attached. Thrust is a force exerted by a compressed spring or rod. It acts in the opposite direction to tension, that is, towards the body causing the compression. Force diagrams represent the forces present in mechanics. If the magnitude and direction of enough of the forces are known, the others can be calculated. Drawing a force diagram is often the best way to begin answering a typical mechanics question.
Displacement is the position of a point or body relative to another known point. It is a vector quantity. The SI unit of displacement is the meter. Distance is the magnitude of a displacement. It is a scalar quantity. Velocity is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. It is a vector quantity. The SI unit of velocity is the meter per second. The magnitude of the velocity of a body is its speed. Speed is a scalar quantity. The average velocity of a moving body is the change in displacement of the body divided by the time taken for this change to occur. The average speed of a moving body is the total distance travelled by the body divided by the time taken. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. It is a vector quantity. The SI unit of acceleration is the meter per second squared, or meter per second per second. A special case in kinematics occurs when bodies move in one dimension only. In this case, they may only move in one of two possible directions along a line. For one-dimensional motion, the two possible directions need to be distinguished. This is done by describing one direction as being positive and the other negative with regard to all of the quantities involved. It does not matter which direction is chosen to be positive, provided all of the quantities in this direction are treated as numerically positive and all those in the opposite direction as negative. A special case of one-dimensional motion is where bodies move vertically under gravity. For a body accelerating steadily from an initial velocity to a final velocity, the uniform acceleration of the body is found by dividing the change of velocity by the time taken for the change to occur. As the change in velocity occurs steadily, the average velocity is the mean of the initial and final velocities. The average velocity also equals the displacement of the body divided by the time taken for that displacement to occur. The four equations of uniform straight-line motion are presented here. These equations can be used to find the value of any term when the values of three terms are known. For each component of a calculation, the five quantities should be listed as shown in this example. A body moving vertically under gravity is an example of one-dimensional motion. Such motion can be either downwards, upwards, or in both directions. The equations of uniform motion apply, with the acceleration of the body being that due to gravity. If a body is dropped, then it is normal to take the initial direction of motion, that is downwards, as positive. If a body is projected vertically upwards, then it is usual to take the upwards direction of motion as positive. In such cases, the body falling back down is indicated by negative values of velocity.
If a particle moves in a straight line, its displacement, s after time t, is given by s equals f of t. The velocity of the particle v is the rate of change of displacement of the particle with respect to time. If v is zero, then the particle is at rest. If v is greater than zero, then the particle must be moving in the direction in which s is measured. If v is less than zero, then the particle must be moving in the opposite direction to that in which s is measured. The acceleration of a moving particle is the rate of change of velocity of the particle with respect to time. If a is zero, then the velocity of the particle is constant. If a is greater than zero, then the particle is accelerating. If a is less than zero, then the particle is being retarded.